talk about the ethnic tension and, shall I say, tribal politics that we've been witnessing, not even just in Lagos State, but in the whole of Nigeria, what would you say is responsible for it? Desperation. Pure desperation. Um, what you see happening, I can speak to Lagos State. It's pretty difficult for me to speak to places where I don't live and I have very little by way of experience, but I can speak plainly to Lagos State. The seed for what is happening in Lagos State today was effectively laid with the fraudulent presidential election. And I say fraudulent because there is sufficient basis upon which to make that claim. But more importantly, the figures that were released in Lagos State as the presidential election result were already doctored before they were released. It has no basis in reality. Yes, Labour Party won. Do you have but, any evidence? Oh, yes. That? There, is, there is more than sufficient evidence. Where INEC has become completely unreliable in terms of declaration of result, I will not even rely on the result that we have in our situation room. If I go by what PDP released in the public space, it's more than sufficient. PDP said Peter Obi and Labour Party had over 900,000 votes in Lagos State. They had a little over 100,000 and APC are the same. The truth of the matter is that Bola Ahmed Tinubu was roundly rejected in Lagos State. It wasn't just the Igbos. It wasn't about the Igbos rejecting him. He was rejected across the length and breadth of Lagos State because it was a referendum on his 24 years rule and hegemony in the state. So when you now heard the INEC people announcing a result that was supposedly so close with such depressed voters number, I remember that I was on a rise maybe a couple of days after that result was released, and I said at the time very clearly that this result is not reflective of what happened. At my polling booth, they were counting votes up until 1.43 a.m. in the morning. My wife did not vote until around 8.30 in the evening, and so the same happened across the length and breadth of Lagos, despite the best effort of those who were bent on disrupting the elections. So when they brought out the figure, I said immediately that, one, it was not as close as they would like to pretend that it was. It wasn't close. It was a whitewash. However, in order to validate the lies that they have to tell and the tribal hatred that they are staring up, they had to portray a close election so that the script that they have already written for this Saturday's election might be legitimized in all the nonsense they are doing. So, one, number one, we must be clear about something. The first duty of a state is the protection of citizens. When you have a situation where citizens are being attacked and people are being singled out for attack, you had the one in the jail dodo, one Bale in the jail dodo, or KBAC in the jail dodo, suddenly remembering that he wants to worship Oro and is declaring Oro during the period when people should be out. Well, well I think we've uh, had a clarification on that. He said the Oro rights will go up until Friday. Yeah, let me, if you have had clarification Saturday. on that, there was another one in social media today some bidded clown talking about another Uru again. Yeah. Another, yet this was the same person that was caught on camera during the presidential poll. So you have a situation where you can speak about the political class in a situation where you have a political class. What we are dealing with is a criminal class that is determined to hold the people down by force of harms or whatever it takes. They are making this about tribe because there is no record to place before the people. We've had 24 years. 24 years. My people have a proverb. They say, Okay. <laughs> well, we are going to have to temper our language a bit. No, no, no. Let's temper our language a bit. No, no, no. I don't worry. National television, okay, let, so we have to be very careful. Tell me talk where I hear you, but let me say this. I am not a frivolous man. I did spend some years practicing some type of law before I retired as a lawyer, so I'm well advised as to the possible legal liability of any word that I might use. So anything I'm saying, take it as a given that before I would open my mouth to say so, I know as a fact that what I'm saying is the truth, and I have absolute fact standing behind it. And because you have said so, let me explain myself. Over two years ago, I sat in this same studio, and I announced to everyone that there was a murder plot over my life. 
And I then went on. This was after I had submitted petitions to the DSS and to the State Commissioner of Police. Up until today, in this state, in a country governed by law, nothing has been done. Some of those persons are the ones busy going around threatening people again today. I've been coming to your TV studio for a while. This is the first time in years since I've been coming here that I'll see armed soldiers required to protect what is supposed to be free press. So we're dealing with a situation where even though we might pretend that we're dealing with normalcy, there is nothing normal about our situation. If the people are allowed to vote in a free and fair election, these people are over. That's the truth. They have no record to place before the people. Only intimidation, blackmail, ethnic division, religious division, all sorts of divisions in order to keep the people from seeing the truth of what they should be facing. Was it the Igbos that have been digging up roads in Lagos State over the last 24 years? Has the Igbos been the one that have stopped the rail that has taken seven kilometers or there about that has taken 16 years to construct? Was it in the Igbo that has stopped that? Who is the person who is busy selling all of Lagos to people that is now shouting about Indigo, Indigo? There is just a validation of hatred in order to divide the people's attention so that they might not face the issue. The real issues are about a collapsing state, a collapsing country. They might want to forget all of well, that and let, distract let, our let attention. Just, um, let me just interrupt you briefly. You, earlier, you talked about criminal gangs, you know, yeah, being given free hand to run. Yes. And of course, we've seen all sorts of posts and videos of, on social media that could be characterized that, as hate speech. But, you know, sadly, nobody has been arrested. Nobody has been prosecuted. So I'm wondering, is it that there are no laws against such, or is it that the laws are not being implemented? If the laws are not being implemented, how do we enforce that? Let me talk well. I have um, I've been shouting for years. It's pretty much the same seat. Talking about the fact that we are not a country governed by law, and that we are a country governed by impunity. That our Policemen pretend to uphold the law, but they know that they dare not uphold the laws. If they tried it, their political masters will end up in prison cells. So what you end up having is the administration of impunity, and that is what governs Nigeria. So these people you call criminal gangs, that I will also call criminal gangs, they are not really criminal gangs in the classic sense. They are part and parcel of the governance process of Lagos State and practically the whole of Nigeria. Because you were there. People saw pictures. There, right there, in broad daylight, policemen standing, the evidence of the state. In Yoruba language, we call policemen olokpa. Olokpa actually emanates from the person who carries the staff of office, the upper staff of office, is insignia and authority. So, in, Yor in the Yoruba's mind, the olokpa is the symbol and representation of the state. You saw policemen in, at multiple locations standing aside while thugs quote and unquote. We call them talks, but they are not talks. These are stakeholders in the governance of the state. The BBC had a documentary where they had MC Mushroom Peking calling governor. That is what we are all pretending we do not see. And that is what they are hiding behind the hatred that they are staring up all over the place. So you and I will call them gangs because that tickles our fancy and it helps us to deodorize those who wear bow ties, wear suit, wear a bada, sit down in your studio and speak Dogon Turenchi to cover up for those who are carrying guns and are threatening everybody else's peace. The reality is that they are not criminal gang in the true sense of it. They are part and parcel of the governance of Lagos State and have been for the last 24 years. So if we say we are a state or maybe a country governed by impunity, how then do we change this narrative? You said you've been here several <laughs> times talking about the same issue. So that in case for you not to come back in no, a few months' time talking about this, no what worry. then would you say is the way forward? There is no danger of me coming back in a few months' time to say this. And I'll tell you why. Ultimately, a people get the kind of government they deserve. The Nigerian people can blame Tinubu, they can blame Babola, Biola, Obasanjo, blame this, blame that. Ultimately, they bear the responsibility for the governance of their country. When you find people who knows the truth but finds a basis to justify their hatred, which blinds them from what they should see, 
They are telling you all of a sudden that a person born of a Yoruba parent to an Igbo mother is no longer a Yoruba. They are justifying hatred. These same people were so progressive in their thinking that they were the first to start to start appointing Igbo commissioners. There is an there is somebody from Kanu in, in Lagos. They go, so they are progressive when they need to be, but when it serves their purposes to demonize in order to divide, they remember very quickly. All of a sudden, is no look at the end of the day. They want us to have these asinine debates debating nonsense when we should be facing issues. The issues are, how is it impossible in a state that is more or less underwater that the whole of Lekki Peninsula does not have a square inch of pipe bone water after 24 years of the genius of Bodilon? How is it that in Lagos State, we still do not have a coherent education system and nobody who can afford it will send his child to a government school? And that is when the government school is even available. You have less than three out of ten classroom spaces in Lagos State owned by the state. And how good are those schools? Those are the questions we should be asking, but they will prefer that we are not asking those questions. They will prefer that we are talking about is Baba is Igbo, his mother is this, is high pop, is that. Nonsense. Mm -hmm. Those are the distractions, and it is up to the people to either allow themselves to switch on their brains and decide what is in their own enlightened selfish interest, or they continue to allow their enemies to point at their, enemy, to, at their enemies for them. I have made up my, their, my own mind. When all this is over, Nigerians will live with the consequences of their choices because at the end of the day, even where they did not choose, such as last, the last election, where we chose across the country in overwhelming numbers, they have started applying tribal and ethnic sentiments in order to divide what was a nationwide co coercive mandate and divide it to portray it as an ethnic agenda. And Nigerians are the ones who are receiving it in spite of what they know. So it's really, you can, if you set yourself on fire, the blind still wouldn't see. So what's the point? I hate to say this, but they say when the Agama fell from on top of the Iroko tree, it beat his head. He said, yes, I have tried. It shall be said that. I did my best, so don't worry. It's unlikely you'll find me in your studio. <laughs> I'll go and take care of my wife and my children and face my own business. I've tried my best. It will be up to Nigerians to decide their own future. Well, just before